hey guys good morning so today we are going to talk about the juice clarification that is the sugarcane juice clarification so before starting that let us discuss something about the sugarcane what is the sugarcane so sugarcane you have you could have seen in the field it is like just like a stick having many kind of that lines that line line and stalks it is having that one leaf and all it is having so let us talk about sugarcane the sugar cane with its high fiber and carbohydrate content constitutes an important renewable source of energy during its long growth period of 10 to 16 months this plant converts good amount of solar energy into sugar and cellulose and is considered to be one of the most energy efficient crops in that the energy provided by the biomass of fully grain cane is four times the energy input during the crop cultivation. Sugarcane sets are planted in the soil and the plant develops growth in the course of its cycle during which it converts water and CO2 from atmosphere into carbohydrates. In the presence of sunshine, I think you would have known what is this process. This process is nothing but the photosynthesis. Photosynthesis okay we'll go next in the growth of growth phase of the further further while growing in the further the sugar accumulation occurs more in the lower portion of the stock progressively decreasing from bottom to top joints but in a fully mature cane this disparity is practically absent or negligible within the stock the internodes are richer in sugar while the fiber content is higher in the nodes as shown by the earlier studies, whatever the studies has been happening by the scientists, different kind of scientists or sugar technologists, they would have find that uh, when uh, the uh, that internodes are shorter in size, so that time the fiber content will be more. If the internodes are longer, then sugar content will be more. So depend. <coughs> This difference is composition. Actually, why this happening? No, this this difference is composition accounts for the two observation. The first one, a cane with short internodes, as I told, a cane with short internodes will give high fiber and lower sugar content. The juice expressed in the last mill under heavy pressure is of lower purity than the first of second. So generally what is having a cane what is having is actually the cane can be divided in three parts the first one is the leaf that is the topest top top portion the second one is that tops and the last one is that stock that is Hindi in Hindi you, you can say is Tana so based on the different climatic condition and all sugar cane composition falls under the following as you can see Depending on the climatic conditions, soil condition, cane mature, etc., the sugar cane composition falls under the following: as the water will be around 70 to 75 percent, the sucrose will be around, uh, you can say uh, some in the some places it is going up to 14, 15, 12 to 15, or uh, up to 18 also. As the primary juice will have, it is more. So this will be the composition of the cane juice. Then we'll go for sucrose and other carbohydrates as you can see the reducing sugar it falls under 0.3 to 3 percent organic matters other than sugar 0.5 to 1 percent what is an organic acid organic matters organic matters is nothing but the proteins pantosans pectins waxes whatever all present that organic matters second one is it will come under inorganic compounds that is 0.2 to 0.6 percent Nitrogenous compound 0.5 to 1 percent, purity 79 to 85 percent, and the pH of that juice will be 4.8 to 5.5 units. What is the purity? Purity is the part of the sugar, part of the sucrose present in the entire solids. Means entire concentration, uh, how much the solids are present in the cane juice, and how much sugar is the present. So that part of the sugar which is con contained in the entire dissolved solids is known as the purity so now we'll go for what is happening the clarification there will be some these are some few steps will be there as you can see this is the screen juice we are telling some places it is called as a mixed juice also 
so uh, this will be the first step that ex juice, uh, juice extracted from the mill this will be screen juice or mixed juice whatever name is there in the different kind of fact different factories some places they are calling as a uh, mixed juice some places screen juice so this will be the screen juice next the, this juice will go for the clarification in the boiling house so there will be two stage heating and the chemical addition on all will be there so stage 1 heating will be there up to 70 to 72 degrees celsius 70 to 72 degrees celsius will be there then after the addition of the chemicals will take place if we uh, see i have uh, mentioned here the defecation pla this defecation plant in the defecation plant only milk of lime will be added for getting this ph 7.2 to 7.4 and uh, second stage heating will be there up to 1 or 2 to 1 or 2 degrees celsius and then after flocculant addition will be there and that juice will go to the settler via a flash tank so uh, then uh, from here we will get the clear juice and muddy juice will be uh, go to diffuser uh, this is the then suppose if it is a sulfidation plant then what will happen this this juice will go for the first heating and here lime addition will be there after that here sulfur dioxide gas that SO2 will be uh, added so SO2 addition will be there either in simultaneously with, with lime or uh, that lime will added before the gas if lime is added before the gas that is called a shock lining because in the streamline that whatever the juice line is there in that only directly that lime will be suddenly it is given as the shock so that that two three kinds of there is there for chemical addition so this is general flow diagram for clean juice clarification now we'll discuss about the stage one so the if we are heating up to 70 to 72 degrees then what will happen why we have to heat up to 70 to 72 degrees the first one is increase it is increases the rate of reactions and the further further slide you will see what is the reactions is happening you can see this is the reaction will be there so this reaction will take this at 70 to 72 degrees celsius so this reaction uh, for that some certain temperature is required if we are going over overheating or lesser heating then the reaction will take place very slower okay so and next what will happen at that temperature protein gets denatured and saturated means it will get precipitated easily third one is pantosins get precipitated then the it, it, it reduces the chances of leucodus stuck to develop in the cold lining what is the leuconostic mesit actually it is its name as a leuconostic mesentriad mesentriads if it present in the juice then it will form the dex dextron the dextron is nothing but the polymer of glucose so if it is there then it will reduces the whatever the sugar content in the juice it will reduces it will just polymerize into dextron and the sugar it will go it is just uh, like a gummy substance gummy substance it will go in the heaters or anywhere any heat exchangers and it will choke the tube and lines and many problems will come so we want to anybody want to avoid it so fifth will be the albumin and gelatin get dehydrated gene denatured and coagulated next will be there the p25 that is phosphoric pentaxite forms a thick precipitate and attract the suspended impurities have to up to this temperature the precipitation of phosphoric pentoxide that is that will be very good and it will absorb adsorb the impurities whatever suspended in there then up to 72 this, this is the most important thing which is happening sucrose in inversion which will this loss will be minimum at that 72 degrees celsius temperature and the reaction time will be lesser as the reaction is happening as the we are heating up to certain degree temperature so the reaction will be faster and the rate of reaction and the retention will be lesser this is a juice defecator as uh, you can mention here juice sulfite also design will be same only in the sulfidation what will happen one extra gas line will be here one extra gas line will be here for sulfur dioxide so since this is a defecation plant so sulfur dioxide gas has been removed but 
if uh, we are talking if we talk about the juice sulfate the sulfiter then this defecator only we have to remove here that sulfiter we have to write here and one gas line we have to give here so this will be lime addition and then gas if in this line only if here we are adding then this is and sulfur dye gas is here then this process will be called as shock ph if this so gas is here and the lime will be here means they are just uh, maximum one second difference by at their application then that will be known as a simultaneous chemical addition simultaneous liming so these are the reactions that as earlier i have told you so next we will we'll go for the next this is the tcp is the main and tcp that is called as tricalcium phosphate this is the most important uh, precipitate which absorbs maximum impurities suspended impurities up to it on its surface and that forms a thick precipitate and this is the second one that calcium sulfide in uh, this cell this calcium sulfide will be major in sulfidation now second will come to second stage heating so we are going in after sulfidation or uh, defecation we have to heat up to 1 or 2 to 1 or 3 degrees celsius the reasons are that this er eliminates the air bubbles from juice and decreases viscosity and density and then it will allow the faster settling of the juice that is faster settling of the mud muddy juice whatever the mud already precipitates had been formed and one more thing is there after actually what what happened after this one or two one or three degrees Celsius heating those precipitates are getting compacted but that is not fully compact so we have to add another chemical that is called a flocculant that flocculant we are adding here you can see I'll show you the flocculant will be added in the feed line here here any addition will be there flow in the feed line here only we have we have to add the flocculant so that whatever will be the the precipitate that is had is precipitated that flocculant will uh, form a surface and it will collect that suspension and form a heavy heavy particle and that will get settled easily so this will allow faster settling and absorption on ppt Fourth one is the Fe2O3 and Al2O3 precipitation that will hide precipitate as an hydroxides. Waxes and lipids get absorbed with precipitation of inorganic non-sugars. Pectins get coagulated as calcium pectate and precipitated out up to 1 or 3 degrees Celsius. The destruction of reducing sugar is minimum. What is the destruction of reducing sugars? So first one, now first one, let us discuss what is the reducing sugars. The glucose and fructose they are called as uh, reducing sugars. What is happening? They reacts with the. This uh, uh, if we are hitting more at higher temperature and high pH, what will happen? The destruction means that glucose and fructose will uh, decomposed into smaller acids, and sugar loss will be there so at that temperature that 103 up to 103 degrees celsius that loss will be minimum and the last point was that that hemic acid hemic acid will be removed otherwise if it is present then the tcp of sugar will increase this is the typical this is the short sometime clarifier many kind of clarifier are present in the market and in the, even in the factories so this is a really what will happen here juice will be passed and juice will go bottom so here separation will be occur you can see here separation is occurring here separation is occurring and this bottom line is this line this line is a mud zone and here mud will removed and this clear juice will be come out so thank you Sorry.